Welcome back students to ITTV's lesson of biology form 4. We have completed till chapter 4 and now we are entering into chapter 5 known as cell division. Well, cell division is a very important topic for your SPM because there are lots of questions and furthermore it's a very important topic to understand how you basically function as an organism. Now, we all knew that the cell was the basic unit of life. Now we knew that the cell could also carry out its own functions, right? Therefore, the cell should be able to reproduce. But we don't call it reproduction of cell. What do we call it is cell division. Now, have you experienced whenever you had a small cut in your hand or when you fell down and bruised your skin? Well, the skin eventually grows back, doesn't it? Do you remember every time you go and get a haircut, the hair eventually grows back? Remember still, whenever some of you like to bite your fingernails, you bite your fingernails, you throw them off, give a month later, your fingernails have grown back again. This is all the fundamentals of cell division. Now we will learn throughout this chapter how cell division is being carried out, what kinds of cell division are there, what are the stages involved, and how we can apply it in our daily life. Alright, so get ready, it's all about cell division after this. So students, we start off our lesson by asking a little question. What is the importance of cell division to us? What is cell division for? So let's check out the significance of cell division. As you can see, there are few importance of cell division. Now basically you have to remember these two. Cell division helps to heal wounds. Cell division also is in charge of growth of hair and nail. Now, Basically, if anybody asks you what is the function of cell division, just give them one straight answer. It is in charge of growth and it is also in charge of replacing dead and damaged cells. Simple as that. Let's carry on. Cell division is divided into two stages. You can see there. One is known as the nuclear division and the other is the cytoplasmic division. Now the nuclear division, there is two types namely mitosis and meiosis and throughout our lesson we will be learning and focusing more on this cell division known as mitosis and meiosis however mitosis and meiosis has to be completed or at the end of mitosis and meiosis there is a cytoplasmic cell division which occurs now the cytoplasmic division is also known as cytokinesis now students be very careful mitosis meiosis cytokinesis now cytokinesis is not part of mitosis and meiosis it occurs after meiosis it also occurs after mitosis very good now once more let's take a look at some basic characteristics of mitosis and meiosis as it is listed before you mitosis will produce two daughter cells which are genetically identical to the parent cell it occurs only in somatic cells it occurs very actively in the meristems of the plant. Now students, meristems, how many types we have? Two, eh? Apical meristem and lateral meristem. Very good. So the root tip and the shoot tip and also in the cambium. All right. Mitosis helps in the growth and elongation of a certain plant. Meiosis on the other end is when four daughter cells, which are genetically not identical to the parent cell, are formed. Meiosis occurs only in reproductive cells and meiosis helps to produce gametes. What are gametes? Examples of gametes are in humans, sperm cell and ovum, in plants, pollen grain and the ovule. Very good. Now let's carry on in detail about mitosis. You can find the importance of mitosis or the significance of mitosis. Now the chromosomal number in a species has to be maintained. The somatic cells contain two set of chromosomes inherited from each parent. Each cell contains a diploid number of chromosome. And this diploid number of chromosome is symbolized by the letters 2N. And in humans, the diploid content is 46 chromosomes. We can also call it as 23 pairs of chromosomes. Each pair of chromosome 